Let's go out to the uh, Toyota of Hollywood guest line. Shop over 1,500 Toyota's indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. Our guy, Seth Levitt, he is the co-host of the Fish Tank podcast with OJ McDuffie. And, of course, you can hear him on post-game action with Travis Wingfield along with Juice. They do a great job. Seth Levitt, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good. Uh, I think we're always going to walk up the show today, to be honest. <laughs> Why is that? what I miss? Uh, he, he, first of all, he thinks I'm reading way too much into this beef with Debo Samuel and Raheem Mostert, which I'm okay. I agree. And you are. I'm not, dude. They don't play against one another. You can talk as much trash as you want. The spice has started, dude. Trust me. That's like a heavy <laughs> to a light heavyweight or a middleweight. No, like you're not gonna fight them. But there Who is cares? going to be fighting. There is going to be team fighting. No, so, the, so the fuse has no, been lit. Not. No, there's not. <laughs> it has been lit. That, that's not trash talk. I agree that. I, I'm telling you, dude. That's not trash. Then talk. why are the 49ers being so sensitive? What do you mean? Raheem, like Raheem Mostert, didn't mean any dig at Jimmy Garoppolo, but Debo took it as a slight. Still got to defend your guy. Yeah, you, 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 but you're, nobody's. You're like, talking about two different things. No, no. I'm saying if you think it's a dig on your quarterback, you got to defend your guy. But at the same time. When you lose, use lyrics and 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 all, you ain't really talking trash. That's how it's done these you days, ain't dude. Talking trash. Okay, here, let me explain something to you. Me talking trash to the other team's running back does nothing. <laughs> if, if I want to talk trash, I'm gonna talk trash to somebody. I gotta let me talk trash about one of the linebackers. Okay, but here's the thing. Debo is upset. Because he feels his quarterback was slighted. It's all offense. Because the conversation, the root of the conversation started with Raheem Mostert telling this uh, this 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 uh, journalist that I believe because we have a quarterback who can sling it, we're going to be scary good. Why are you treating us like the Hassan Whiteside situation? We got shooters. <laughs> That's what he's doing. So it's an offensive beef. You don't think there's beef here, Seth? I, I kind of wanted to let you guys just handle this one. Uh, to me, it's like it, I, I don't even see where the issue is. I, it Thank just, you. It's like uh, nonsense. He, this is what I do every day. Every day. He goes, <laughs> Ooh, look what I found on Twitter. I, I don't know if it's real or not. People like trash talk. Why are you asking? That's not like, trash talk. It is, dude. It is. I'm he telling is you. People. That's if not tell, trash talk. If Debo Samuel is telling Raheem, people, if, if exactly. Raheem Mostert is being told by Debo Samuel, be serious. That's trash talk. Wait, be oh, serious cannot be considered it's, trash talk. Dude, it is. <laughs> Seth. Right. This is what I do every day, Seth. Be right. real. He's be real with yourself. Serious. Be real. And he's crying laughing. But that's a sarcastic <laughs> laugh. Yeah, that's a, that's a laughing well, at him. They're not laughing with thing. him. They're laughing at I'm him. sorry. If oh, I need, God. like, trash talk uh, uh, translation, then I, I don't need to be in the trash talking game. Especially two people that don't fight. You ain't fight nobody. And you talk about what is beef and what is a beef. I know. That's dude. how they do it. There's not even fighting. Like, there's not even going to be a oh, hit, right? You can't you even come in there want, and stick a guy. Seth, this is who I want to be the arbiter. What's trash talk and what's not? Oh, boy. Brian Cox. Well, there you because go. Because if it is trash talk, <laughs> he's going to give you a two piece of soda before he responds. Fair so enough. So then we. Uh, give me those, Seth, your excitement level for this game. I mean, these, uh, the, these are two of the best teams in the league going into this one. Feels like one of the feature games of the week. Obviously, there are a lot of storylines in it because the head coach came from this franchise. Sure. Um, so like, where, where is your excitement level going into this week? Yeah. I, is it going to be a little bit like that Spider-Man meme where all the Spider-Men are pointing at each other? <laughs> is it going to be one of those deals? I mean, look, so so there are some underlying interesting elements, and apparently uh, there's another one I didn't even realize was that interesting. But um, I, I, it's exciting because, as you said, it's good football and it's relevant football. I, I love what Coach McDaniel said. There's nothing better than meaningful football in December and January. And it's been a long – well, you know, I shouldn't say that. The Dolphins have had meaningful games, but it's kind of like must win games this time of the year. Like if you and not only must you win, but you're waiting for other teams to lose and you're doing all that. You're going into this thing eight and three on top of the division and you're going to play a really good football team. So it's an opportunity to truly see where you're at as an organization. You know, you've got two good shoot three games in a row against good football teams, two of which are teams that you're competing with to, to have that playoff spot. And, yeah, what's more exciting than that is playing games that mean a whole lot and having a chance to be a part of this thing. How nervous are you if no they are not able to have Toronto Armstead this week? 
Uh, I, I mean, look, not having Teron Armstead, I think, is a big deal for sure. Uh, you know, we've seen how important uh, his, you saw what happened when Tua wasn't playing, right? I mean, there's it was very clear Tua when Tua plays and he finishes the game, whether it's a, a, a you know when he walks off the field on when his he own, chooses to end the game, correct? When he chooses to end the game, there ain't no uh, and and zero and three when he doesn't. And there's a lot of factors, but, you know, certainly can look at that. And I think, you know, you have to say, look at the offensive line play when Teron Armstead's in. And we all understand the importance of having a really good left tackle, and he is really good. So, yeah, I mean, you know, that's tough, but that's the sport that these guys are playing. And you, there's no way in the world that when you look on paper at your roster at the beginning of the season, you can just expect that you're going to have that same group when you start playing games in December and hopefully in January. It's just not the way this sport works, unfortunately. And these things happen, and they've got to figure out a way to work around it. Seth, it's crazy to me that Armstead makes this much of a difference. I'm not – and I'm, I'm not, you know, doing it to slight him. Yeah. But he's made this much of an impact with how that whole offensive line does. That is pretty amazing to me. Right. Yeah. And, and how he plays. Now, I will say this. They've struggled because it's not just him. Mm -hmm. Right. They've always had like two or three offensive linemen hurt at the same time. Yeah. And then they start playing guys a little bit outside of their element. I think they can cover for one guy. But now you got Austin Jackson also. And so now you're going a little bit too far down that, you know, list. To where that's what's going to be the issue. Yeah, it, it's an interesting point, Leroy, because in theory, if the left tackle's out, that shouldn't affect your right guard, right tackle, right? You know, in theory. I mean, I imagine there might be certain things schematically, but, you right. know, that, that you shouldn't just – the whole thing shouldn't fall apart. Um, it was, again, it was interesting to hear. Well, both Tua and Mike McDaniel took blame for all of the sacks, which I thought, hey, great leadership. They took all the blame they and put the guys do. in bad positions. But the truth of the matter is, is that – you know, the last four get prior to the game against the Texans, you know, you had Brandon, you had shell on the right side. Right. And then he, you know, he wasn't even in the starting lineup. So Jackson's coming back. It's his first time playing in 10 weeks. And then, you know, you, you lose Armstead shell comes in on the other side. And so uh, they, they, there was a lot of rust, I thought across the board and the offensive line, unfortunately, that's that, that was, uh, I think they were most impacted there. Well, which the offensive as a whole was, um, I'm with you though. It's like, wow, one guy and especially one guy all the way at the end, you know, that's an important piece. Right. Like if you lost your center, I could see where that impacts both sides of the line. And, and so, so that was surprising, but I'd like to believe, I hope that with a week's worth of practice and knowing what to expect going into it, that they can figure out ways to try and mitigate some of that loss. You're not going to be able to replace the guy because you don't have a talent like him to just mm -hmm. plug in there, but hopefully they can find other ways to still be productive. When you got it any time, and here's here's a good rule of thumb. Anytime you have to switch sides with a player, they're gonna struggle a little bit. Yeah. Because it's I mean, just a matter, it's the almost equivalent to you all of a sudden having the right left handed for the rest of the day. Yeah, I mean, only Tua can pull that off, right? A right-handed guy, you stick the ball in his left hand, and next thing you know, he's leading the league in all quarterback categories. So he's the only guy to pull it off. That is such a strange thing that his father wanted him to be a left-handed <laughs> quarterback. You know what? It, it's Phil Mickelson. Mickelson. decision at this point. Phil Mickelson is the same way. It's so crazy. Phil Mickelson is right-handed. He golfs left-handed, which is yeah. unheard of. It's it, it's it's such a it's such a shit. like I kind of get like if you're you know raising your kid like I've said uh, when my kid I was like yeah hit lefty you know, everybody loves a lefty or hitter. pitch lefty right if you or can pitch, be a lefty yeah like pitcher, but like being a lefty here. quarterback is such an odd thing especially uh -huh. if he is naturally right handed what a what a strange thing for his father well, to he's only, uh, he he only won national just championship right fifth overall I don't know draft, you know it's working. Yeah, it's working. Hey, listen, whatever, 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 Papa Two is you know is has got going for him. It's it seems okay. Let me bring you into another debate that we had earlier today. Oh, all right. How, wait a second. Has this become the debate? Or do you guys just do this all day long, or only do you wait for me to get here? It, it, it just it, We don't know. Sometimes the days, <laughs> it just stumbles. In, you know, we haven't been in studio be, together in a while. Right. I was on vacation. He was in Cleveland yesterday. But when it was early in the game, it was uh, – they were up 10-0. Uh -huh. Fourth and 10. We finally get to see Thomas Morstead. Yeah. I understand the decision. It's conventional. You know, you're midfield. You let your punter punt. But would you 
have been surprised if Mike McDaniel would have gone for it on fourth and ten? Because I feel yes. like this offense, they can get ten yards whenever they want. Now that's no. that seemingly every throw is over the middle for a first down. When you need ten yards or you're turning the ball over, it's different, right? It's hard, right, Leroy. It's harder to get ten yards when everybody in the building knows you need ten yards. When it's first and ten and you can accept three or four yards or forty yards, then getting to, <laughs> oh my god, these comments crack me up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I would have been surprised. Here, yes, here's the problem. He says, "Oh well, they're moving the ball, and you know that team can't score. That's why you pin them back." Right. You don't want to play. Listen, you it, don't want to play a field position game with a team that can't score. It obviously, worked out marvelous because Von Ginkle got an interception like the next play. I get you, but I'm just saying, Mike McDaniel. No, don't just <laughs> say. You always just say. And, and, this is why and, and it worked. Arguments. So I don't understand. Well, like, why is there a debate if it worked, Toby? Like, you punt the ball, you put it them back, you field, force a turnover, was, you get the ball in the two yard line, and you score. It, like it that's so, yeah, that's it, playing it field so much, position. It wasn't so much a disagreement. It was just in that moment I'm watching the Dolphins. They were humming that entire drive. And then all of a sudden, at eh, three incompletions, a little drop here and there. But I'm thinking to myself, this Texan team stinks. They could get 10 yards whenever they want to. So if Mike McDaniel decided on that fourth down, yeah. fourth and 10, I'm going to go for it. You, I wouldn't have been mad at him. You would be fired by <laughs> midseason. <laughs> like, mid-season. I go through this every week when, hey – during the game, hey, why didn't he do this? Like, no, it's very Madden, like circa you yes. know, 2002. He doesn't that, even that play Madden, though. No. But this is the most explosive football I've ever seen. It's amazing, and I feel like they've, I feel like they feel they could do that whenever they want. Yeah, but it's still got to be rooted in some sort of like you know, strategy and common sense. No, like you know, otherwise, See, you start to lose a now, little bit. Now, of the... Hey, you know, you had people have their wheelhouse. Yeah, when you said strategy and common sense, <laughs> that's well, not he it. Just fell off. He just fell off. <laughs> he is no longer. No, <laughs> he has no common sense. He doesn't think like that. All right, right? Like we had Tyree Kill. You know what he was saying? Now we could get Debo Sam. That's what he does. <laughs> okay, it, it's never enough. <laughs> Don't never. Sam. Oh, uh, that, what do you got coming up on the fish tank? Followers podcast? are too Thank good. You, well, today, uh, n- nothing <laughs> as good as this. But um, <laughs> so, Brendan Ayamadejo, I don't know if you remember Brendan. He, he I played uh, with his here. brother. He did. You did. You played with Obafemi. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. what's cool is so did he. So, his, he, that's his guy took four years. He was an all uh, Pac 10 in, in college, doesn't get drafted, took four years to get to the NFL. Listen to his journey this guy went on. Two teams in the NFL he got cut by. He goes to Canada, plays for two different teams. He goes to the LA Express in the XFL, goes to Amsterdam for the NFL Europe, goes back to Canada, and finally four years later gets a chance to land on the Miami Dolphins roster. And his brother, Obafemi, is on the roster as well. Spent two years here. And the guy spends 10 years in the league. He's pro bowler three times. He's uh, all pro. He's two Super Bowls and the whole thing. Really interesting guy. Also is a, a, a huge advocate for um, LGBTQ community. He, you know, he, he was on the front lines of uh, fighting for same-sex marriage as a straight NFL player. So that in and of itself was unique and ahead of its time. So really an interesting dude. And I think most people who are Dolphins fans will remember him for that Monday night football interception of Tom Brady. The Dolphins are 2-11, and 11, and I think the Patriots are 12-1. and one. Come down here. We got the orange jerseys on. There's no way we can beat the Patriots, the defending Super Bowl champs, and he gets an interception with two minutes left in the game to put the Dolphins in position to go ahead. So great moment li- reliving that with him. A lot of fun, and, uh, yeah, a great listen. Check it on out. The Fish Tank Podcast, Seth Levitt and OJ McDuffie do a fantastic job of that for Dolphin Fans Weekly. And you guys also do a great job with Travis Wingfield on the post-game show. You got a big one coming up this week, Seth. We appreciate you having fun with us, and we'll do it yeah. again. Yeah, looking Thanks, forward Seth. to it. You know what? Can I ask? Do, uh, do we have time? Can I ask Leroy? Or am I no, messing up format here? No, so no, no. Are, you go with as, as much as you want. Format. Uh, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> we're going for it on fourth and ten in midfield. What am I talking about? <laughs> so, <laughs> so one of the things that, that uh, Brendan talked about was – you know, he was a, I guess you would consider a smaller linebacker. I mean, the guy's put together, but he was on the smaller, quicker side. And he said that at that point in time, you know, part of the reason it took him so long to get into the league 
is that the game was this game was more the Leroy Horde game. It was the three yes. yards in a cloud of dust, and yes. you needed those two hundred and fifty pound linebackers that just wanted to shoot the a gap and 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 smash heads. And he said, in today's game, I you know I could have had a chance to start because it's all about mm -hmm. the smaller, quicker, faster guys. I thought that was fascinating. It is. It's all about covering tight ends now and and having range in the secondary and being able to get depth. Uh, think of it at Tampa two. The Tampa two means nothing if you don't have. Uh, linebackers that can get deep. But guess what? How about this? I played against a linebacker. His name was LeVon Kirkland. <laughs> he played in Minnesota. I mean, played in uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Sorry. And he was listed at 6'2", 290 pounds. Oh, that's right. That's what he was listed as. That's a I, ran a, I, ran, I ran a pattern up the seam, and I looked to my left, and I had basically a nose tackle running with me. That's where football has changed. Right now, it's that insane. guy would be a small safety. He looks yeah, right now. It's the scariest thing I've ever seen. On it's the football it's un just to see him roaming, to see that guy roaming the secondary. <laughs> it's, it was terrifying. Yeah. I mean, but you think of Pepper Johnson. Right. You think of, like, no, the, the league was, you know, different. Even the safeties were 230. Yeah, I mean Steve Atwater, Lewis Oliver, think it up. Right. I mean, you guys are beasts. Right. Joey yeah. Browner. Yeah. Like, I'd say that was one of the things I actually liked about this past weekend. I felt like there were a lot of big hits from the Dolphins. I don't feel like you get to see that anymore. Hits. Like between you don't. Baker and, and what Duke Riley did to damn uh Burkett, like flipped him over, over right. his head. Uh the Eric Rowe uh, knocking the ball loose. Like yeah. I, I loved they seeing how the Dolphins were flying it. at the football. I think you need that for this from this perspective. You need to be able to control the middle of the field and the only way you can do it with a receiver is to knock his ass out when he comes across the middle and then he won't catch any more balls and and i think that we wore that as a badge of honor when we played is that we could go in the middle field catch the ball take the hit and still hold it right that separated you from a lot of guys now there's nobody that does it because well, you and you can't, the rules the rules work against you for trying to do that, right? You right. Know, so you really have to find the right opportunity to do that. OJ talks about all the time these guys can make these acrobatic catches because they they're not afraid of getting their head taken off. Yep, pretty much. Sadly, so we see. appreciate we appreciate the time, man. Thanks so much. I appreciate you guys. Take care. All right, you go for it, man. You go for it, Tobin. On fourth and ten. Always, <laughs> always. Right. We'll take a quick break. Back with more after this.